Um, so kind of to start out with, this, um, this thing is, so it's a public health led incident and anything that's kind of a epidemic, pandemic, I guess any kind of demic is really kind of a public health led response because they are the city's public health entity too. Um, they're countywide. We're gonna take a lot of our lead from them. Uh, this is what they do. And we have, all the cities, all the municipalities and the county have come together and decided to respond to this thing as a county. Uh, Harold's on, and there's a lot of systems that are already in place and a lot of systems that we're building to respond to this if it gets any bigger. Um, probably the biggest one that's gonna have the most impact right away is what's called a joint information system. It's kind of a fancy name for all of the public information teams from all over the county, um, municipalities, uh, the sheriff's office, commissioner's office, school district, hospital systems, anybody that we can kind of think of that's related to this event in any way um, are coming together with public health to try to create a consistent messaging platform. Because I think uh, we also have a group uh, that started meeting on Monday of all the agency administrators, all the city managers, the elected officials to talk about policy level issues. So we're gonna do that weekly. We have the emergency management offices, uh, Longmont, Boulder are meeting every day with public health the emergency plans from public health to talk about tactical level things. What do we need to have a group that's getting together with the hospital systems? We're expanding that out to the clinics in the in the next coming weeks to try to support what they're seeing. Uh, we're starting to um, think about what members of our community are going to need a little additional support and how we can start communicating with with them, whether it's homeless, the assisted living facilities, all of those kinds of places, we're starting to lean forward into that planning process too. That's the overview of what we're currently doing to, um, to think about this, this issue as a city. But I think the big message that, that I wanna leave you with is this is a county level incident and we're gonna respond to this thing as, as a unified county. We municipality by municipality, if, it, if we're in a municipality. But generally the way that it's on it is now. It is now. Mm -hmm. So generally the way this will work is they'll make, so assume somebody tests positive. Mm -hmm. They're then going to do their work from an epidemiological standpoint to go, what's the risk? And they'll go, here's what we think we need to do in terms of managing that risk. That then goes to the director of their group and then they provide advice to us as administrators in terms of what they're going to recommend doing. And, and specifically to that question, as we've talked through some of this, whether it's a school district or it's a city, we're all gonna be looking to them for guidance because they're also in working in conjunction with the CDC in terms of the protocols they're issuing. They then make a decision because they're the only ones that can really, for lack of a better word, say we need to do a quarantine or here's what we're going to do. And so then we will all start responding appropriately based on the advice that we get for them. I do also want to state that in uh, statute, public health does have the authority to uh, implement actions to control the spread of disease. Correct. So ultimately, the legal authority lies on public health, and 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 that is there. But but we do want to do this in conjunction with our partners. We don't want to make these decisions in a vacuum. At some point, not right now, but at some point in time, it'll be helpful to be more specific than public health. Right. Mm -hmm. Give us. Here's the person. They make the call. It is has the force of law or whatever. There's an emergency declared, yeah. and there's no question. There's no. It's the director of public health. Mm -hmm. so, if so, we so have our our public health director is Jeff Zayak, but then we also have the state health department, and and the head of the state health department. And there's also I don't know what the acronym is, but it's the GERC, which is the governor's kind of emergency communicable disease group. And, and they also have levels of authority within this process. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, Mayor Bagley, members of council, I'm Lisa Knobloch, Sustainability Program Manager, and I'm here tonight to give you an update on the Climate Action Task Force and climate action in general. And if I get to Climate Action Task Force, you all saw a variation of this slide at the retreat a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Climate Action Task Force has now held five of their eight meetings. They have drafted 
uh, recommendations on the three topic areas on the left hand side and I will go through a pretty high level review of those recommendations with you tonight and they have now moved into developing recommendations for the education outreach adaptation resilience and land use and one change from when you saw the slide last is the they did decide to include waste management in the land use topic area so you'll see recommendations around that and in, included in land use when that comes through as I mentioned before, equity is incorporated throughout all the recommendations and there will be a section also on governance, plan evolution and adaptation. So looking at what do we do once the report is completed. So as I mentioned at the retreat, we're also going through a community engagement process concurrently to inform the public of the work that we're doing and to gain feedback on draft recommendations to understand how we might strengthen the recommendations what are potential impacts or negative consequences that we might not be thinking about? And then what are we missing? And so where we're at in that process, we've developed and distributed flyers throughout town that are driving folks to the Engage Longmont website. We have started tabling at a number of different community events. We're launching a questionnaire in the next couple of days. Uh, we'll be doing presentations with a number of different community groups, setting up educational kiosks at key community locations and uh, working with volunteers to do what's called kitchen table conversations with friends, families, neighbors, coworkers, things like that, and then bringing that information back to the Climate Action Task Force. So the next steps, again, they'll be drafting their recommendations for the new subgroups that we talked about. They have a joint meeting with the Just Transition Plan Committee on this Thursday the 5th, and that's a, a three and a half hour meeting where each of the subgroups that's completed recommendations to date will have an opportunity to go do a deep dive into one or two of the recommendations with the Just Transition Plan Committee who will do an, essentially an equity analysis on those recommendations and talk through possible equity impacts and look at opportunities for uh, increasing the equitability of those recommendations. Again, they'll be able to incorporate all of that feedback and from the feedback from the community engagement efforts to refine and finalize the recommendations. The report is due April 8th, and then the, um, that'll be presented to council on April 14th. And then in addition to what's happening with the Climate Action Task Force, uh, we wanted to mention that the city also is really taking a number of steps to accelerate uh, our work also in context of and in alignment with the climate emergency resolution and the resolution to transition to 100% renewable energy. So we've been working a lot with, with staff to identify what we're already doing and some additional strategies that we can take to help accelerate those efforts. I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, I'm just gonna pull out some highlights, but again, if you have questions on any of these, please feel free to holler. As I've mentioned, we're in the process of updating the greenhouse gas inventory. That's well underway, we have a lot of that data collected and our consultants right now are in the process of modeling all of that information and we'll bring those res uh, results back to you all when we have them in the next couple of months. Uh, we've talked to you about, we're doing some energy efficiency assessments at a number of our city facilities. Uh, we've just recently uh, worked with the contractor on that to include an electrification component to that. So looking at opportunities for fully electrifying those f facilities uh, as well. We recently received a grant to transition some of our city land to low water turf and to do some demonstration and research uh, on opportunities around uh, not only reducing our water use on city property, but also utilizing plant materials that reduce the need for uh, mowing, which will reduce our uh, greenhouse gas emissions associated with um, fuel use from um, those types of operations. And then as Dave Hornbacher has talked to you about, he's working with um, Platte River Power Authority on a distributed energy resource plan. And again, as I mentioned, that's a focus from the Renewables Energy Group as well that'll have the recommendations from the Climate Action Task Force around uh, distributed energy resources. Uh, really what we're looking for tonight is um, uh, we believe in order to stay on track, in particular with the Nelson Flanders treatment plant expansion, uh, it is, um, um, really necessary that we would seek uh, voter approval this fall at the 2020 um, uh, general election uh, to issue additional water bonds for that particular project. You're not, we're not asking for a formal vote tonight to place it on the ballot, but rather whether you want us to continue to pursue uh, the effort and do the necessary work such that we would bring that to you. 
Thank you. There's a motion on the floor. All in favor say aye. The motion is to direct staff to move forward on the preparations to put this on the 2020 ballot. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. The motion passes unanimously with Councilmember Peck absent. Healthy beverages for children's meals. Good evening, uh, Mayor Bagley and City Council members. I'm Olga Bermudez with Children, Youth, and Families. So I want to talk today a little bit about the process. So, um, you know, there has been like a long process, I want to say three years working with the community. So uh, the Healthy and Long One is a coalition uh, between, that was uh, conformed between parents, um, it was also community members, uh, children, youth, and families, local businesses, public health, the state, and national health uh, organizations that came together really just to look and to see how we're going to be able to support uh, our children, how we're going to make sure that our, health, our children are really healthy. So this, uh, now I want to talk a little bit about the, the ordinance. So the ordinance uh, is not a really punitive ordinance. Pretty much what we are trying to accomplish here is uh, the restaurants will be uh, offering, uh, you know, when they have the children's meal, they're going to be offering a healthy uh, beverage. And a healthy beverage, the definition will be uh, water uh, with no other natural or artificial sweetness, milk with no dairy uh, substitutes, with no added natural or artificial sweetness. So pretty much will be water. Uh, sparkling uh, water or milk without any uh, sugar. And the restaurants is still, they can sell another uh, type of beverages. If parents request that or the children request that, they can uh, also, um, they will be able to provide that beverage. Here is, it's just so you can have, you know, a real sense of the impact on local restaurants. When we're talking about restaurants here, we're talking about, uh, we're not talking about food trucks or grocery stores or convenience stores. We're talking about places that serve meals, they could be um, sit-down restaurants, they could be fast food restaurants. There are a total of 218, um, according to Public Health, the way we classify these things in Longmont. Right now, 80 are serving children's meals, or I'm sorry, so it's 37% serving children's meals, 92% of those are currently offering sugary drinks. So there are 74 restaurants that would be impacted by this policy. So really tonight we're looking for some direction and uh, from council some some input um, in particularly around the uh, compliance issue too is that um, and Eugene may our city attorney can uh, help me with this but what we would what we would look at or what we propose would be is that Boulder County Public Health would be responsible for um, you know for compliance I could move or I don't know if you want to move it you gonna move it I move that we um, adopt this do we direct we, staff we, to move forward? Yes, move staff to move forward. I'm sorry. No, thanks. Second. All right, it's been moved by Councilmember Christensen and seconded by Dr. Waters. Councilmember Martin. A motion on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. All right, that passes unanimously with those of us present, and Councilmember Peck is not present. Oh, thank you. All right, last but not least, uh, let's talk about House Bill 20, 1164, concerning the exemption of a housing authority from certain fees imposed by a water conservancy district. I assume everybody has read this. If not, take two seconds while I make a motion. I move that we direct staff to oppose House Bill 20, 1164. Second. second. Yeah, we all seconded. <laughs> all right, so that was moved by me and seconded by... Everyone. We'll say, we'll say Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez. Get them on the, get them on the agenda for tonight. All right, and then uh, anybody have any further comments, debate, et cetera? All right, uh, Councilmember Martin? Yeah, thank you. I just, I just wanted to say, you know, from the water board, they were pretty serious about opposing this and they had very good reasons. So I won't go into them at length, but trust us, it's not a good plan. All right, so that said, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, that passes unanimously with Council Mayor Peck absent. Mayor Bagley, one so, of All right, do we have a motion to adjourn in the spirit of? I so move to. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's all right. We move to adjourn. All right, it's been mo the, the motion has been made by a rare show of uh, solidarity. partner solidarity with <laughs> Council Members Christensen and Martin. I shall second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we are adjourned according to six of us, and ironically, Council Mayor Peck is absent. <laughs>